wait a minute, stop the presses. One of my best buddies and one of the most one of the most professional professionals I know has just joined the show. My man Jeff Aronson. Hey Jeff. Hey, good morning, Darren. How are you? I am outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff is the president of Olympia Financial. Did I get it right? You got it right. Olympia Financial. Now, I don't know how much you guys know about the lending business, but there are private lenders out there. There's your tra traditional lender, your bank, your Wells Fargo, your Bank of America, and then there's private money, private lenders who can do things, maneuver in ways, and create opportunities that the regular banks, the big, slow-moving, traditional banks can't do. And Jeff is the absolute best in the private money lending game that I have ever met. This man has saved my bacon on some deals three or four or five times and has shown me some opportunities in the private lending game that I would have never been exposed to. And it's a whole different realm. And he's here to share some, some, some of the insights of the private lending business with us. How are you doing today, man? Good, good, Darren. It's uh, you know, it's an interesting market we live in today. So. <laughs> That's for sure. Thanks for making the long, long drive to to come and join me. Um, I I am I'm gonna tell you about this real estate revolution that I'm launching. But educate us a little bit about how you got into the private money business. Well, uh, if we step backwards a little bit and we go back to uh, about uh, 2006, 2007, when the market was starting to unravel. And uh, I saw it in 2006, knowing that um, that we were going to have a major change. I don't think anybody ever anticipated the change was going to be as big as it was and create as much turmoil for everybody as it did. Four million foreclosures. So, um, yeah. So in lieu of all that and with all the foreclosures happening, um, I had uh, recently sold the conventional company that I ran for many, many years, which had about 110 offices and couple thousand employees we were doing quite a bit of conventional deals and the con this was a mortgage company <clears throat> traditional mortgage company okay after that was sold in 2005 um you know i started dabbling in a couple different ideas and uh and with the lack of availability to acquire funding through traditional sources i started to invest into real estate uh by way of debt mm -hmm. in the way of loans to people that couldn't find financing um, that slowly grew with the stock market changing to people that wanted to put their money in something other than the stock market. And it started to, you know, people calling me saying, what are you doing with your money? What, you know, what's happening? And I just kept going into the real estate and the real estate and the real estate on the debt side. A little bit of equity here. And that's what slowly started to grow our fund. Um, and that gave people the opportunity to be able to borrow, not depensive on their credit not depending on uh, a lot of times their income, and most importantly, not on the actual property. Um, tradition. So, so tell us. So so educate us. Tell us how why, how and why private money works, or how is it necessary? What how how are you? How is that money more nimble? I always say private money is quicker. It's easier. It's more nimble. Tell us how. Okay. So uh, traditionally, obviously, there's a lot of guidelines to getting loans done. Um, traditionally, uh, you're looking at the bank or the underwriter, whatever, it's a mortgage company or, you know, one-off Wall Street, you know, insurance fund or whatever it is. They're looking at a lot of different factors. So they're looking at predominantly your income. They're looking at your ability to repay. They're looking at the debt ratios. They're looking at your credit. And they're looking at the property. And all of these factors have to meet their guidelines in order for you to acquire funding. Yep. So a lot of times you can have a person that has excellent credit. You can have a person that has excellent income, but they want to buy an apartment building that doesn't have the right amount of income coming in, or it's an apartment building that has some vacancies, and that doesn't, that doesn't fit into the guidelines of traditional lending. So people can come to a private sector like myself and we will fund those transactions based on more or less the property's value, more or less on the collateral that they're pledging. And we can make those decisions relatively quickly, usually within the same day. Um, if they want to move forward or if they have an opportunity to buy something that somebody needs to close, for whatever reason it is, we can do deals as quickly as two, three days. Now, see, that's, that's really nimble. I know that a lot of people aren't familiar with that process or they even know that somebody could really go that fast. So, um, and so it sounds like a lot of it is opportunity driven. And if you or your company 
um, acknowledges and understands the opportunity that that person is trying to take advantage of, and it makes sense, you can come up with the money fast. We can come up with the money very fast. And, and a lot of times we've saved a lot of situations or we've you know created an opportunity where somebody was able to close and buy a building that, or a house or whatever that they were able to make a considerable amount of money and they got the price they got, uh, discounted whatever, because they could close much faster than somebody else and the money was real. So they didn't have to wait. You know, a seller didn't have to wait for 30 days or 45 days and waiting for all these contingencies to be removed and so forth. I mean, we can we can do them immediately. So and so on this show, we talk a lot about uh, opportunities. And I talk, I tell people I buy situations. I don't just buy real estate. I buy situations. And so if I see a situation where somebody needs to sell quickly and or I see something that's like needs renovation, we're talking a lot today about renovation and gentrification of neighborhoods and that kind of thing. If I see an opportunity, this this house might be in a great, might have great bones, it might be a great opportunity, but they haven't renovated it for 40 years. And if we rent, we buy it for 600 grand and we renovate it, we know we could resell it for 900 grand. And with your, if you agreed with me on that opportunity, is it true that I could go in and make that seller like a cash offer knowing that you said, Darren, I got you. So if I got my portion of it and you're going to loan me the rest of that, we can go and aggressively make a cash offer as opposed to some 30-day slow deal that doesn't compete as well. That's absolutely correct. Kind of like some of the deals that we've done in the past, Darren. Yep, yep. And, and so I think that's, that's an advantage that a lot of people don't understand. If you got a guy like Jeff on your team and you see an opportunity, because we don't buy real estate, we buy opportunities and situations, and you got a guy like this on your team – you know, Jeff has driven out to properties with me. We take a look at the property, and I go, look, I think if we, the guy is willing to sell it for this, and you know if it's all fixed up, cleaned up, straightened up, it could be sold for that, and he'll be with me. He'll go, yeah, that makes sense. I see it. And if he agrees with me, then we can suddenly go and make that seller a fast cash offer. Now, what do you get when you can offer somebody cash? You can buy yourself a discount. Isn't that true? That's very true. And so, you know, having that, having a private lender on your side, it gives you a certain amount of buying power that Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase can't give you because you're going to go through that 30 day underwriting and approval process with your bank with the private money guy. If he sees the deal and sees the merit in the deal like you, he can write you the check. Well, you know, it's um, the other thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about is about the way that that we at Olympia do loans because like you said situations you know my real estate by situations we're kind of the same way because one of the things that makes us so different from some of the competition and some of the other lenders like us is that we take the extra time to really structure a deal so we can look at the deal break it apart and figure ways to structure it to make it work and i know you and i have done that before for some of your clients we've yep. done it for some of your deals yep. where we really get down deep into this deal and we figure out ways to make it work whether it's the term whether it's the payments whether we you know build some interest back in so you can afford it uh, until you can get the property done and resold and capitalize on your profits so that's one of the things that we really specialize in is learning how learning how to structure the deals and make them work and make them fit into the box. I'm hearing creativity, you guys. You, you hear that? Creativity. They're entrepreneurs who say, okay, here's the situation. It's not ideal, but we know where we can go with this thing, so let's figure out together how it makes sense to get the deal done. And I've watched him do that in some situations where maybe uh, you might recall a situation where the cash flow was going to take a while to get there. Correct. Matter of fact, there's one we're evaluating right now that I'm going to show him. I'll, sh I'll bring it on the show when we get it figured out. But there's a property that's half vacant right now. It's a, it's a rental property. It's half vacant. Well, once we renovate those units and, and get them fixed up and get them rented at market, that property's going to be worth a lot of money. But it's half vacant today. So a regular bank would never loan us the money to buy that property. But a lender like Jeff will go to that property with us and, and he'll agree that, okay, once you get all those units cleaned up and rented out, the value of that property goes here. The cash flow goes here. He could structure a way so that we can afford to buy and maintain the property until that property is renovated and rented out. Is that right? I mean, one of the things that we do, Darren, is we, we create the uh, – we open the door for your access because – 
you know, if you went traditional, for an example, like what you just gave, you would not be able to get a normal person to get into that property. They'd have to pay cash for it or whatever. Yep. We can get them in that property, and we're a short-term lender, so we're only going to lend you for, you know, one to three years. We're a short-term lender, so we're going to give you that money. You're going to go ahead and, you know, fix up and do your rehabs to those units, get them rented, stabilized, and once it gets stabilized, then you can go and get traditional financing. It doesn't really matter about you so much because they're really banking on the fact of, you know, the rents coming in and what the debt service uh, – ratios are and so forth so um and if that property does debt service once it's stabilized anybody will lend you the money at that point there you go but you got to get there that's the whole thing exactly and so chase and wells fargo they don't really care about the situation they just need to see a clean stabilized <laughs> ready to go piece of piece of property whereas somebody like a private lender like jeff like olympia will look at the situation and go okay that's not normal. That's not just some plain vanilla situation. They can say, look, we know what this property could be, and we're willing to work with you to help you get it there, or help you sustain until you get it there. And then, you know, then, then Wells Fargo or Bank of America might be the lender of choice for you. Because this money is typically a little more expensive, right? It is more expensive. Okay. And so, um, so what you get the opportunity to do is talk to Jeff about how expensive that money might be and then, and then you can evaluate whether that, that money is worth paying for because the, the size of the opportunity you could, ha you could be buying. You see what I mean? So I, I like that. So now let's talk about, um, can you give us any kind of ideas about how expensive it can be? Like what, what kind of range? What does it, how does it usually work? I mean, the range for the loans, it can go anywhere from, you know, 8% to 12%. Uh, okay. I mean, the difference between us and some of the other lenders is that we will, again, look at structure. So we can, you know, sometimes cross-collateralize other properties. We can also do first loans. We can do second loans. And we've been known to do thirds and fourth on cross-collateralization as well. So, okay. I mean, again, we're, we're very creative in the structure to make things happen. We're, you know, we're not your long-term, we're not your long-term uh, end-all, you know, Right. Lender. Right. I mean, we're the short-term lender that's going to get you the bridge to get in there and be able to acquire the property, be able to, you know, make those things that you need to do so you can actually participate in this real estate world that everybody's talking so much about. And I think that in today's market, I mean, I think you're going to see a lot of opportunities. I don't think that we're going to see the same thing that happened years ago back in 09 and 10 and so forth, uh, only because for the last 10 years plus, the lending that's been done has been so strict and so difficult for people to acquire funding. Uh, the guidelines have been so tight that you're not going to see the market fall apart like that because most of the properties that are out there that are financed are financed with you know, lower loan to values, they're financed through uh, longer term where the where the, the borrower was seriously qualified. Um, so m much more conservative. Yes, this this last 10, 12 years, the banks have been conservative. So you're not going to find that. So I think that you just, like you said earlier, you're going to have to find uh, you know, situations, situations. situations where there's a lot of situations that occur all the time. I mean, people do get over encumbered. People get, you know, in trouble. I mean, a lot of our clients today, that they're, they're, not the, they're not the typical private money type client that you saw 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. 15, 20 years ago, you usually had a client that was, you know, didn't have very good credit or had some kind of issues. Today, you don't have that. Most of my clients are, you know, fairly well to do. They have a lot of, uh, they have a lot of uh, net worth. They have uh, uh, a lot of uh, buildings or, or homes. They own a lot of different real estate. A lot of them have very good credit, but they have their situation where they might have a cash flow issue and they're trying to buy another building or they need to get money out of one to fix something because it was something that transacted with the city or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what we see today. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, our lending parameters, I mean, we'll do loans as low as 100000 We'll do loans as high as, you know, $20 million. So, I mean, our range is... You know, our, our, our range is probably somewhere in the 500 to 5 million. I mean, that's probably our sweet spot at mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a deal that's 35 million. Wow. Um, we'll probably be funding that. Um, you know, we just funded a deal for 150,000. We funded a deal for 5 million. We funded a deal for 3 million this month. So, okay. I mean, we're all over the board. So, I mean, we're, we're open to the opportunities to help people out. So, well, this is good. Now, you know, my, my audience needs to know that because what we're talking about <clears throat> is what's going on in the marketplace and it's kind of created this movement that, that, that I'm leading the charge in. And, and what we're seeing is a, a lot of situations where, 
uh, cities, the, the the large cities, L.A. being one of them. We're seeing uh, we're seeing gentrification. We're seeing neighborhoods that are in the city, closer to downtown, closer to Century City, closer to to you know workplaces, and people moving from the suburbs back into the city, and they're renovating houses and and creating you know better better equipped neighborhoods for for those kinds of things. So what what I'm talking to my crew about, my audience, is about taking advantage of some of those opportunities where many of us grew up or where many of us, our parents owned homes for 20, 30, 40 years. And now if you renovated those homes or if you got those homes ready for the new wave of buyers that are coming in, trying to be closer to the workplace, that might be an opportunity for you to acquire something, clean it up, and, and resell it or rent it out. And so a lot of times... People might need fast money or people might need private money because that house isn't what it could be. But the idea is to get it and, and participate in what I think is is, is a shift um, by doing that. And they might they, private money might be the route. Well, you've seen uh, we've seen a lot of neighborhoods that have changed like that. And, and so <clears throat> from a private money lending point of view, I mean, we're looking at that. We're looking at, OK, so what is this property and neighborhood going to be? in 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. Right. And we're looking at that. Now, a lot of things, I mean, if you look through the country, like even if you go to New York and you look at Brooklyn, I mean, Brooklyn was not the greatest place. Right. Now it's, uh, you now know. it's trendy. It's, it's trendy big, as big can trendy. be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're talking about houses that were, you know, 175,000 are now close to a million dollars. Exactly. I mean, so it's, it's definitely had a shift. Um, we're seeing that here too. If you look at Inglewood, because yeah. of the new stadium and so forth, yeah. these properties that were sitting out there that were worth virtually nothing mm -hmm. are now skyrocketed in value. So, yep. and and we get a lot of calls for from people that own those properties all the time because they're looking to take money out of those houses so they can buy additional properties around and start their portfolio of building passive income and things like that. Exactly. You know, and getting in the game rather than just being there. Exactly. So we see that a lot with you know properties that have been you know passed down from a grandmother or grandfather who passed away and stuff and so we see that a lot you know and uh, uh you know we we kind of we kind of assist a little bit in the way of uh, helping people understand what's best um and how much money you should or shouldn't put into the property and and just us taking a look at that and what we're willing to do what we're willing to lend based on the trend of the neighborhood based on how long the sales days are for each house or how many properties are on the market um you know, then we can make good decisions, and, and that helps you make good decisions as well. Wow. See, that's awesome. So so for uh, in a twist, in a change that you don't normally see, you can have the lender on your team. It's not just somebody like, like, like you walk into the bank and you want to apply for a home loan. You, this is an opportunity to have the lender as you kind of work more like a partner than a lender in most cases because you're evaluating the opportunity with the borrower. Right? I am. And, you know, and that gives, you know, I mean, listen, I mean, sometimes people come to us, they want to buy a property and we just absolutely won't lend the money. Sure. I, I got to tell you, I mean, you know, they can go out searching for more, but I think we've done them a favor at that point because, you know, I've been doing this for 28 years. So, I mean, I'm pretty savvy when it comes to certain things in regards to the real estate and where the trend's going and, mm -hmm. and if that property is going to be worth. Now, I'm not going to be right 100% of the time, but you know what, for the times that I'm, for the, for the percentage that I'm off, the percentages that I'm right saved people's ass many a time. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I'm just saying. So it's like, you know, you need to take some consideration into that because we are looking at it from a different view than you are as the buyer or the seller. We're looking at it from, you know, a financial point of view to make sure that we get our money back. And if we're going to get our money back, then you're probably in a pretty good position. So, And so that's a good, that's good. A second set of eyes and ears that are going to help me evaluate what it is we're trying to buy. And so, you know, if, if I can do my math and I can do my analysis and I can do my due diligence and then I go to my lender and if he does the same thing and goes, yeah, Darren, we'll make you that loan. I, it's a pretty good bet that I'm making an intelligent move because I got reinforcement from the guy who's actually going to write the bigger check. And so I, I think that's a valuable thing. I mean, we, we want to make sure that, that you know, you can sustain. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's never our goal to put somebody into a position that they can't sustain or that they can't repay. So when we're doing lending, we're, we're really looking at, uh, aside from the property values, because we, we don't want the property. I mean, that's not our game. I mean, uh, you know, there's many lenders out there that do. They loan to own. That's not our thing. Mm. We want to loan you the money. We want to make our interest. We want to get repaid back, and we want to redeploy the money again. And, and, we, and, and, you know, it's like I've... 
I've uh, been in this business long enough to know, and I mean, there's a lot of people in the business that don't really believe in our business that there's repeat business and there's referral business. And I got to tell you, I mean, that's how we built our business. That's how you built your business. People come back over and over and over. We don't do, we don't really do much advertising. We have a lot of uh, core, you know, uh, broker base that that brings us deals and, and so forth. And so we... That's where our business comes from. But a lot of people in this industry, they don't believe in that. So they believe in it. So they one, they one burn people shot. off. That exactly. Way. That's not that's not the goal. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because we don't want to put you in something that, that you can't get out of. I mean, so we're going to make sure that we leave enough room in there so you have the ability to you know, get additional money if you need it. You have the ability to sell and still be profitable. So, you know, the, again, the way we structure this stuff is to make sure that, that the borrower is safe. I mean, safe and can yeah. and can survive this thing and hopefully come out the other side profitable. Especially if they put, you know, hard cash into this situation. So, you know, that's the last thing that we want is for somebody to to step into there and, and lose that. So, you know. Awesome. So now, uh, I, I know a lot of people in, in my tribe are going to want to know, uh, you know, if I want to if I want to talk to Jeff or somebody at Olympia about an opportunity I have to and I want to con- consider borrowing private money. How do we, what's the best way for somebody to reach out and, and, and reach out to Olympia? I mean, I can give you the phone number, which is uh, pretty easy. It's 818-885-8585. That's the option. That's pretty number. easy. 818-885-8585. Or they can email if they'd like. I mean, okay. My email address is jaronson at olympiafin.com, which is J-A-R-O-N-S-O-N at olympiafin, which is O-L-Y-M-P-I-A-F-I-N.com. Marlon will put that on the screen. Don will put that on the YouTube screen, and uh, everybody will have an opportunity to do that. If you reach out to Olympia or to Jeff, say, hey, I, I heard Jeff on the Road to a Million show, and I, I'm, I'm interested. I, I want to know more. And they will take the time to help evaluate what it is you're thinking of doing and what you're looking at, and uh, we'll help you in any way we can. Because the goal here, the reason this show is called The Road to a Million, is because we're trying to help your prosperity. And this is, and you know I believe in property ownership. I believe in it. And so if there's a, if there's a, a way for you to get in from an angle that you didn't know about, that's what we want to show you. And that's why Jeff Aronson is here. He's the president of Olympia Financial. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk to Jeff about the money behind private money. So... This is the Road to a Million Show. I'm Darren C. Campbell, the hardest working man in real estate. Your real estate mentor. We'll be back in three minutes. Good segment, man. That's good.
All right, we are back on the Road to a Million show. This is the Road to a Million show on YouTube, Road to a Million show. On Facebook Live, we are on Road to a Million show uh, at Darren, we were Darren Campbell Coaching, Road to a Million show. And then we're also at RoadToAMillionShow.com. I am sitting here with actually one of my best friends, but also uh, the number one private money specialist that I have ever met. And his name is Jeff Aronson, president of Olympia Financial. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Hey, thanks for having me, Darren. We're having a good time. Je Jeff has taught me a lot about the lending game all while we're uh, getting ourselves into all kinds of trouble all over town. But um, we, uh, the, the, what Olympia does is helps you kind of navigate those special deals that might need something other than traditional financing. And so where you might see an opportunity and you need money to make that opportunity happen and Chase or Wells Fargo doesn't see that as conventional enough or straightforward enough, uh, somebody like Olympia Financial and Jeff might come in, understand that situation, and be willing to loan you the money to do it. That's valuable because if you want to buy, own, reposition real estate, sometimes you need a different kind of lender. And Olympia is different, right, Jeff? Yeah. I mean, one of the things that we can help out with is that, you know, you were talking earlier uh, for about you know, repositioning and about getting situations as opposed to just real estate. And so a lot of times you've got a purchase price, you know, that could be much lower than what the actual value of the property is. Yep. And there's a lot of reasons that drive that. But for example, if you went traditional and you wanted to buy a property that was $500,000 value, but you were getting it at $300,000, mm -hmm. the bank's going to look at the acquisition and it's going to be $300,000. So if they request you to put down 25%, you're going to put down 25% of $300,000. Yep. With us, we're going to look at what the value of the property is. So if you had a smaller down payment, but the value was much greater, we're going to look at the fact that there's a value mm -hmm. there and we're going to count that spread in there, that extra $200,000 to help you get into that property. Because what we're really lending on is the collateral. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we, we, we do want to make sure that you have the ability to pay, and we want to make sure that you have a good exit strategy. But, and you know, and uh, we'll, we'll help you with that as well. But, but we're able to do that, where most people cannot do that. So you can look at that property and say, we see that there's an inherent value, a future value of 500, and use that as opposed to what our normal bank is just sees as what you're paying for the property. Well, no, okay, so that's a little different. That that okay. that's another good point. Um, what we call you know future value or okay. after repair value. Right. Okay. Um, so, but what I'm talking about is a lot of times you're going to come across a property where the value is much greater than what the people are actually paying for it for a lot of reasons. I mean, the property could be in foreclosure, it could be a probate, it could be a lot of different reasons that that they need to get out of it. And you might be able to buy that property that's really worth $500,000. Um, you may be able to buy it for $310,000. So if you were to go to a traditional source, you're going to have to put down the, the required down payment based on what the acquisition price is. Right. Nobody's going to allow you to you know, base it off of what its real value is. We will. That's gotcha. the difference. So if somebody had to put down 20%, again, on a $300,000 purchase, they, they would have to come up with $60,000. Regardless, okay. no matter what. Not okay. flexible with the bank. So if if we really value it at, at $500,000, then we're, and let's say it was 20%, um, you know, you're you're looking at putting down a lot less money because we're giving that extra $200,000 of, it's almost like you're putting down $200,000 at that point. Right. Because you're, you've got that much equity in the property when you close escrow. So, you know, w that's, again, where I come with the flexibility to be able to help people find these mm -hmm. situations and fund these situations. So. And and you guys can be nimble and quick, right? You can do this pretty fast. We do it very fast. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so now let's talk about let's talk about uh, the, the other side of the equation. So <clears throat> the money, the money to fund these loans, is, is this... You have you have investors. Is there some? Can we know where, where that money comes from? It's like you got institutional partners, or there are people, and because maybe there's some people out there that want to know how do, how do they get into the game. Um, okay, so I mean we manage we manage a considerable amount of money, and uh, we do all of our own servicing, which is great. So mm -hmm. you know, um, from a investor's point of view. We'll manage their money. We'll put it into trust deeds. Um, sometimes it's individual. Sometimes it's fractionalized. So, for example, in the event that somebody comes to us, like say you, Darren, and you want to borrow a million dollars, 
you know, we might have uh, three, four investors that have $300,000 a piece. We can fractionalize all those together and put them into the same deal. From your point of view as a borrower, we'll never know the difference. From right. our point of view, you know, it structures the deal. Um, we manage everything, so we bring in all the payments. When the payments come in through our system, an investor can go into our system to look to see whether or not the payment's been made, um, when they're going to get their check, and we do everything by ACH. So okay. for the most part, borrowers can pay by ACH. Uh, we pay all the investors by ACH, so they get their money almost instantaneously once we get that money in the door. It's all held in the trust account. Um, and we have investors that have given us as little as 75000 and I have investors that have given me more than $50 million. So Wow. Yeah, so we have a big array. So it's like, you know, and, I, and I've watched over time where somebody has sold property and they – or they sold real estate, and you know today's you know, today's market with some of the stuff we're talking about, like with apartments and things of that mm -hmm. nature, where the cap rates are so low that you're investing your money into a, a cap rate of three or four percent, and that's what your returns are. Where they can come to a company like us and they can invest into trust deeds through us, and they can you know net a minimum of around ten percent. Some of the investors net more than that, so it creates a real good opportunity to be able to put your money in something that's secure. Um, I mean, again, with any investment, there's risk. I mean, sure. um, and the investors have to be they have to be qualified to do business with us. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, if anybody's interested out there, we're happy to take a look at what their situation is and see if it makes sense and and if they qualify to to uh, invest with us. Um, we don't take anybody, so we're a little you know we're a little strict in that. As you should um, be. Yeah. So you know. But so that's that's a, that's an important thing that you know my audience might need to know that they don't always understand or know. And a lot of you might not understand. Jeff loans money, but when we say private lender, it's Jeff's got investors who say, Jeff, I've got money to, that I'd like to give you money to loan to people, and I'd like to make a, a better than average return on my money. And those are people who can interview or apply or talk to Jeff about being one of his investors. And listen, this is another thing that I preach that I talk about. At some point, there's an advantage to being the bank. This is a way for you to essentially join Jeff, join Olympia, and be the bank. And I, I, in my mind, that's really like the best position to be in. I, I want to be the bank. And so you, you'll hear me talking over time, the, the, the funds that we'll develop and the, and the investment groups that we'll put together. At some point, some of that money might join Jeff and be the bank. And I've actually participated with him in some things. And, and it's another... Another way to grow your money, another way to give your money, another lane to run in. You know, we talk about you want to give your money legs. You want to send your money out there and have that money make money. Well, here's another opportunity. Private lenders, you might meet a private lender. A guy might say, I'm a private lender. You might read about a private lender many, many, many times, if not most times, that private lender is a guy who brings investors in who he then lends the money out on their behalf, Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I've, I've got a lot of clients that, you know, again, we're talking about buildings and apartment buildings, things like that. So I, I, have, a, I have one particular investor that owns, uh, you know, several buildings. And what they've done is they've liquidated the ones that are really low cap. So it's like, you know, why have a million or two million dollars tied up in an apartment building or an office building or whatever it is that really isn't netting them that much money. So for example, after they pay all the expenses of the building and they've got the rent and they've got the vacancies and the management and everything they've got mm -hmm. done going on there and uh, and all of a sudden they're making, you know, let's say they're making out of a $2 million building, they might be making a, a, a net of maybe $8,000 a month. Okay. That's super it's, low return. It is a super low return. They could take that building, sell it, give me $2 million, and I'm going to make them closer to $20,000 a month. Big, big difference. It is a big difference. You and know. That, so, and, and they don't liquidate all of their, they don't liquidate all of their uh, real estate holdings, but they liquidate the ones that aren't uh, producing like, you know, it's like anything. I mean, if you, if you owned a, a retail store, I mean, you know, we see people. The retail stores close all the time. That's because certain stores are not doing as well wherever they are. They close those down. They're still running business everywhere else. And it's the same thing with real estate. It's the same thing with people investing into real estate. So instead of being the owner of the building with all the responsibility, they're now the lender of the building without the responsibility, making a higher yield than they would have if they owned the building. Bingo. So. 
Ooh, we just dropped some wisdom on you right there, people. You could actually be the bank. So a lot of times you're driving by, driving by a house that's being renovated or you're driving by an apartment building. You see they're out there changing the windows. You see the building being beautified. A lot of times that, that the financing for that turnaround is being put up by private money. And there's two things going on there. Somebody borrowed private money to improve that asset, and somebody loaned them private money. And those are many times our private individuals who work with people like Jeff to loan their money out to make a return on it. So to see how the system is working. So you might pay a little bit more for private money, but it's more nimble, it's quicker, it's faster, it's easier to, to, to evaluate and get a decision on quickly. And then on the other side of the equation, there are individuals who are putting up that money and they're charging you a little bit more than your bank would charge you. But no way can your bank move this fast. No way is your bank this entrepreneurial. No way is that bank going to say, oh, I see where you're going with that. Let me let me give you let me give you a few more dollars than than normal because it's an opportunity. Yeah. So um, you got you got to Yeah. You got to keep in mind also um, you got to keep in mind that, you know, from our point of view, we're looking to partner when we loan money to people that are getting themselves involved in something that's profitable, something that's beneficial to them. We're not really, you know, we're not the lender that's looking to fun finance somebody's, you know, first home. That's not what we do. No. I mean, we don't do that. We, we traditionally do loans that are more or less business purpose, that are used for a business or used to build you know, yep. portfolios and things of that nature. So, you know, although like we talked earlier that it's a little bit more expensive to do this type of financing as opposed to traditional, but also you're looking at the fact as most of the people that we're lending money to are making profit when we lend them the money. So, right. you know, we're given the opportunity for them to be able to, to build that, you know, it's like, it's like opening a business, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, somebody loans you the money to open the business and then all of a sudden the business makes money. That's the same thing with real estate. I mean, we're loaning you the, the money to get that real estate, to do what you're going to do with it, whether it's rented, pre refurbished, whatever the case is, hold, sell, whatever, and build that up. And that's how, that's how it's done at the low level. That's how it's done at the large level. I mean, I've seen people buy $50 million apartment buildings and they do exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they take that private capital and they go in there and they buy that, they restabilize it, then they go back to HUD, borrow money from HUD, and they end up with the, all their money back that they put as a down payment or a deposit or whatever, and they end up with all that money back and the debt service pays the loan and it gives them a whole lot of money per month. And I've seen that happen many, many times. And we've been instrumental in helping that person get to that point because without that initial money, they would have never been able to, to acquire the property and get to the point where they can go get HUD financing and, and so forth. So, you know, fortunes have been built because of people like us. So, so is, is uh, the money you lend, could, can, does the term bridge financing, is that interchangeable? Do we call it? The private money, bridge money, you know, people throw that term out there. Yeah, you can call it bridge money because, again, we're short term. So we're, we, we are the bridge is, right. is really what it is. But And so the typical term of a loan that you'll do is what? I mean, typically, you know, we write between one to three years. Okay. okay. You know, and, and one thing that we, we do require is we require a certain yield, uh, minimum yield. Mm -hmm. So we'll require you to keep the loan for X amount of time, depending if, you know, how long the term is. So it may be six months that we, you know, that you're we're required to get six months worth of interest or maybe 12 months worth of interest. I mean, that's, that's just you know, to make sure the investor is getting some money for loaning the money. Exactly. Right? So, you know, from a borrower's point of view, I mean, typically people aren't getting in and out that fast. Um, you know, especially if we're going to do a deal that's going to be a flip or something, that's mm -hmm. going to be like a six month repayment. So, mm -hmm. so our fix and flip guys, uh, a large percentage of your uh, your 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 clients. Not as much now. I mean, I think earlier, um, you know, several years back, it was. I think the fix and flips are you know fewer and far between. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, they were readily available through all the foreclosures and all this kind of stuff. And and today, like what you were talking about, just about situations, I think you still see a lot of those opportunities in those situations, but it takes a little bit more time and energy to find those. Right. And, and that's why when you do find them, you want a guy like us because you need to move fast because there's, you know, there's 10 buyers for every one of those situations. That's right. So, that's right. You know. So the ability to be quick, the ability to be nimble, the ability to partner with somebody like like Olympia and you and make an all cash fast close offer might be the difference between you getting that property and not. Oh yes, absolutely. And I mean what you have to realize is out of those ten people that are looking to buy, 
you know, half of those are, are their own cash. Yeah. They're not borrowing any money at all. So, you know, to have us in your back pocket makes the difference. Gotcha. And I've experienced this with Jeff before. You have the ability to see that situation. And if you know, if Jeff agrees with you that the opportunity is what it is, you can now make an offer on an all cash basis. You can make that seller a cash offer. You can even make that seller a, an all cash fast close offer because your lender already says, I got you. I'm in. I, I agree with you, Darren. Let's we'll, we'll loan you that money. And so now I get to compete a little bit better against the competition that might be out there because I can say, hey, Mr. Seller, I can make you an all cash offer and I can close it in a week and know that I got my my partner, my lender, you know, ready to go and he can move that fast. Right. Yeah, we can we can move fast and, and, and we do on a regular basis. So, I mean, we, you know, I just we had a deal the other day and it's like, um, you know, that somebody came to us and, and there was multiple offers on the property. And, uh, you know, the seller had actually contacted us to say, hey, is this real? I mean, you can really close in five days and mm -hmm. and, and they were willing to take less money. Bingo. Just to be able to close. And the reason why is because they fell out of escrow a couple times. And they didn't want to go another 30 or 45 days, fall out of escrow again, when they know that, you know, sometimes they'll call us and ask us for proof of funds. And, you know, we'll provide whatever we need to provide to help get that transaction into escrow and lock it down. But the truth is, is that we're not the ones that slow the transaction down. Usually right. it's something else from the seller side or from title. Um, it's usually not us that's slowing the transaction down. So we... we we can get things done very quickly. And, Speed is not your problem. And a lot of times when you're talking about buying something, I mean, I had a deal the other day where somebody was trying to buy this property. Um, the property was in foreclosure. The borrower or the seller had been trying to acquire financing to stop the foreclosure for a very long time. They went through all the traditional stuff where they filed bankruptcy and this and that. Well, the, you know, legal, the legal counsel for the lender at that time went in and they got their you know, relief of stays and their in-ram and all this good stuff to make sure that there was no way to stop this property again. So the sale date was pushed um, to the point that they only had about five days. So he found, the, the seller found somebody to buy this property and this legitimate buyer had cash, not enough, they, they needed to take a loan, but they only had, you know, five days to close. And, and that property that was going to be foreclosed upon, the lender requests those funds to be reinstated or paid off, you know, two days prior to the foreclosure prior date. To the foreclosure. So we had three days to close the transaction. So wow. actually, um, I saw value in that property. So I funded the money to title prior to drawing the loan documents, drew the loan documents, came and signed it, released the money to title the next day, the ownership transferred, and the lender got paid off and the foreclosure was stopped. So, wow. Wow. Yeah, so we can do that stuff. It you know it takes energy, it takes time, and everybody's got to be cooperative. But but we can do it, and we've done it, and we've done it in multiple situations where I've actually done deals like that and done those in two and three days. I've stayed up all night to get certain things done, um, and I could tell you story after story after story about that. So. I've seen it in action, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. They will do things that are that are just short of a miracle. I mean, we I've watched Jeff and Olympia do deals that we didn't think could happen, and they pull it off and. And so the ability to be nimble and quick and to be able to make your offers aggressively, you see a lot of, he, he mentioned something that fell out of escrow a couple of times. Well, I'll bet you 50 to 60% of the time um, in my career that things have fallen out of escrow was because something between the borrower and the traditional lender didn't match up. The lender said, eh, now nah, we don't believe in the value. The appraisal came in short. Or, oh, oh my goodness, the, uh, you know, the borrower is not quite as qualified. That we, we don't see enough evidence of, of seasoned money in the bank. Or we don't see enough evidence of liquid income. Or the borrower is in their own business and their tax return doesn't show a whole ton of income. And the lender goes, nah, we're, we changed our mind. We're not going to loan to you because you don't show enough income. That's yeah. real big in California because it's a very entrepreneurial state. Yep. So when the lending parameters changed during the meltdown and the pendul pendulum had swung so far the opposite direction to the yep. point that, you know, lending became almost impossible for people that were self-employed. Really did. So it, th that's one of the other things that rebirthed this whole this whole uh, uh, lending platform. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing that you got to think about when people are buying houses and what causes the you know, the falling out of escrow and so forth is because after they do inspections, sometimes they find things like mold or so forth. And and once that gets earmarked like that, yep. 
then it's it becomes a problem to get traditional financing, even though they're small problems. Yep. So that's where you got a seller that comes back and says, "Hey, listen, you know, I mean, I've had this problem three times. Now I have to disclose it. Um, you know, I'm having a real problem getting the borrowers getting financed. So even if uh, even if a seller and a, a a buyer agree to certain things, doesn't necessarily mean the lender will agree to it. That's I mean, right. uh, the pricing that happens all the time, where a seller and a, a buyer agree to a price and the appraisal comes in low, and then the seller says, "Well, I'm not going to sell it for that price." and the buyer says, well, I can't, you know, unless I put up more of my own money and pay more for the house than what it's worth. Yep. I mean, who wants to do that, right? Yep. Um, so, you know, that's, again, where we come into this equation um, because we have the flexibility to make changes and make moves that can help these people and restructure that stuff. So, um, and, you know, and, and, and that's where we can help out and, uh, and really create that... Uh, less stress environment yeah. in the closing. So Well, and that, that, that makes the bridge real. And so I, I recently did a transaction where the the it was revealed in the inspections and in the appraisal that the property needed an entirely new roof, 60000 bucks, and that three of the vacant units needed to be renovated before they could be re-rented. And the lender sees this in the appraisal, they see this in the inspection report, and they held that money. They said, we're going to hold that money back from the loan. So they essentially held, said, we're going to hold $110,000 out of that loan that we promised you. So suddenly, the borrower is faced with coming up with an additional $110,000 in cash. Problem? It basically blew the deal up because the borrower didn't have another hundred and ten thousand. That's when we'd go to a, an Olympia. We'd go to a Jeff and say, "Hey, look, here's our situation. Can we can we make this work?" And that's where private money guys like Jeff and Olympia come in, and they can actually save the day on your deal. We we uh, we're doing a deal almost exactly like that right now. It's a it's a little larger deal, but it's a it's a building uh, shopping center, mm -hmm. and the guys. Buying the building, um, it's got it's multi-use. But anyways, the the lender has a three million dollar first that they approved. They're mm -hmm. paying I think uh, eight point something million for the property. Okay. And there's a city loan that was for four million dollars, which was a grant, which is uh, it's good till the 2060 something. Mm -hmm. and they don't have to make any payments, and there's no interest on it, and so forth. But they the the city would not allow would not subordinate to a greater than $3 million loan. They needed to come up with $4.8 million because uh. the purchase price was was uh, $8.8 .8 million. So they came to us to borrow the $1.8 million. Um, and so we're doing it, and we're actually doing the loan in third position mm -hmm. um, behind the city, uh, which, you know, most lenders would not do that. But yeah. based on the fact that that $4 million, even though it is a lien, it really, it is and it isn't because there's no payments. and right. So there's no chance of default. And again, we're a bridge, so we're going to be way out before 2060-something. So. Right, gotcha. But, uh, but there's a perfect example uh, of this deal that would have fell apart if they couldn't have come to us to have us do this transaction and put up, you know, a million eight on this. On this and that property. was simply because the, the city had a restriction on how much they could go behind. Correct. So their their loan, you know, the the original person that took this loan out, uh, the original person that built it or whatever transpired, had this loan and had something at three million. When the, when these buyers came in to buy this thing at eight point eight million, okay, so they they need to give the the seller four point eight million dollars. Right. But the city came back and said we're going to only going to subordinate, which means we're going to allow a new loan in front of their loan of no more than three million. So the borrowers would have had to come up with one point eight million in cash, even though the building was worth ten million. So right. you know, at 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 uh, you know at four point eight million in loans, you're really only talking forty eight percent loan to value. So right, it's a low loan to value, but they're still struggling, and nobody would give them the deal. So, I mean, it's a perfect example of what you're wow. talking about. So. Wow, that's good. So so you guys had to look at that and really dig in and say, what are we really loaning here? And what's the real exposure? At the end of the day, your exposure is minimal, so you're willing to go in third position. Yeah, we're looking at risk. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, when, when when lenders go and they do loans in second or third, I mean, you don't really find too many doing third trustees. But when you find lenders that do second mortgages, you have to look at the fact that you know the reason that's a little bit more expensive is because if we lend X amount of dollars in a second position, we have to look at what that first is because you know if there's any hiccups in the regards to people not being able to pay and that first goes into default, we have to basically have reserves to make sure that we can cover that 
first. Mm -hmm. So when we have transactions where people come to us and there's a two or $3 million first, and they want to borrow $200,000 on a second, it's not something that's going to happen. We're, we're probably not going to do it, and, and probably nobody's going to do it. And if you were an investor of mine, I would probably suggest that you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Because you'd have to have the wherewithal to cure that $2 million in front of you. Um, and, and that's an expensive, you know, it's an expensive yeah. process. So, I mean, we're looking at doing these larger, you know, transactions. So, for example, I'll give you another idea about structuring. So people, somebody came to us and they wanted to buy a transaction. They're buying a building and they're, they had a first trustee that was uh, approved from a lender at X amount of dollars. Say they bought, they were buying the building for, you know, $2.5 million. Mm -hmm. They were getting... They were getting a, a, a two million dollar first. first first mortgage, or they're buying it for a little bit more, but okay. a two million dollar first mortgage, and they wanted five hundred thousand from us. Um, that was not the perfect situation, so I went back and said, "I'll loan you a million, and lower your first to a million and a half. And that's the kind of structuring that I'm talking about. So to we need lower to lower your risk to lower the risk because we we need a much larger loan uh, to be able to have a percentage a bigger percentage. We like to be closer to what the amount of the first is. So and a lot of times there's not enough equity to do that. So if right. somebody comes and says, okay, we have a three million dollar building, and they're just borrowing two million, they want to borrow a couple hundred thousand from us. It doesn't make sense for us to do it. I mean, cardinal rule is 20%. Don't ever lend less than 20% of the senior lien. Hmm. Um, our numbers are a little bit bigger than that, uh, only because, you know, that we are bridge financing, and we do, have to, we do have to look at the fact that if there is a default, we have to have that money to cover, uh, uh -huh. and we have to be able to carry it for X amount of time. So we have to plug that into what our yields are. Mm -hmm. So somebody lending $500,000 as an investor, we have to plug in the fact that in the event that that you know, first goes bad, we have to figure that we have to make those payments and so forth, and we have to Car carry all Cure, that. carry, and be yeah. able to sustain. We do. We okay, do. I okay. And just, uh, and so loan to value, typically, what 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 kind of maximum loan to value would, will you expose your money to? I mean, typically, we like to be something within the sixes, meaning, you know, 65, 66, 67, 68. Mm -hmm. Um, we've known to go higher mm -hmm. if a piece of property is, again, a situation piece of property. Um, I had one recently that was in the Hollywood Hills. Um, the house was not great, uh, but the property was incredible. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, from our point of view, in the event that there was some kind of a hiccup and the person couldn't pay, uh, we felt that either A, we would be okay owning the property, B, uh, we knew that if it did go to auction, uh, or for sale, it would probably sell relatively quickly just because of the nature of what the piece of property was. So we actually went up to 78% on that. Deal. Oh, wow. So it's 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 a case-by-case. Case. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, 65 to 70 is really kind of where we max out. Okay. Um, but case-by-case. Case. And again, you can always cross-collateralize stuff. So if you have other property, um, we can always attach to the other property so we can get you more money on this property. And I know you and I have done that before, We've Darren. done it before. Yeah, We've we have. done it before. Wow. Is this an education or what? Ladies and gentlemen... This, is, this has been an awesome, awesome interview with my man, my buddy, Jeff Aronson, president of Olympia Financial. Thanks for being here, Jeff. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Darren. I'd love to come back at some point. Oh, we're going to bring you back. He could bet on that. This was like a heavy dude. Jeff needed both hours. I, I should have had him on for the whole two <laughs> hours. We could keep going and going and going. So I, I hope you guys appreciated that. I hope you learned something. Uh, I'm with my man, Jeff Aronson, president of Olympia Financial. If you want to reach out, if you want to... If you want to reach Jeff or Olympia, you can. He gave you the information. Otherwise, you can reach out to me and Marlon. We'll we'll connect you with Olympia. He's a big resource of mine. You guys will be seeing him help us do things in the future. The real estate revolution is underway. Five thousand renters are going to become homeowners. Five thousand units are going to be acquired in growth areas, and you get to participate. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a fantastic show. I want to thank you guys all for being here. I'm Darren C. Campbell, the hardest working man in real estate, your real estate mentor, and I'll see you at the top.